welcome once again to my channel. Um, if you are new to this channel, my name is Akemi Nidim. I'm a legal practitioner. And what I do on this channel is basically to discuss issues of law affecting everyday living. I discuss law in the breaking news. I discuss law in general uh, perspective concerning everything about society. In this edition of Yonder Law, I'm discussing the invitation of Obi Kubana by the EFCC. The news of the moment is that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has taken in Obi Kobana, and um, that news broke less than 48 hours ago. It's still very fresh, and um, there are many legal issues arising as a result of this breaking news. Now, many media houses, as you can see displayed on the screen here, have reported this very story expectedly. You see Punch newspaper, you see Sarah reporters, you see other newspaper houses reporting this very um, uh, story about Obi Kobana. And this is not unexpected. It is as a result of the fact that Obi Kobana has become a household name uh, following the funeral of his mother, which was um, a high class society funeral. Uh, following that funeral, a lot of people that never knew Obi Kobana began to know, began to know more about Obi Kobana. And also following the interview that Obi Kobana granted to media houses like the BBC Pigeon and um, many other media houses, Obi Kobana became a well-known person in society. The profile of Obi Kobana is to the fact, especially as stated by him uh, in BBC Pigeon, is to the fact that he's a graduate of political science from uh, University of Nigeria and Soka, and that after graduating, he went for the compulsory national service in Abuja, where he then uh, went into businesses. He then, you know, started struggling, started doing um, estate business, and from there he was able to raise money to, you know, uh, go into other businesses. So Obi Kubana is um, someone known to be in the real estate business, someone known to be in the entertainment um, industry. That is. Um, uh, hotels, uh, society, clubs, and so on, and um, many other businesses like that. But that's not um, uh, the news today. I, I, I know that a lot of people take him to be a legitimate businessman. I also take him to be a legitimate businessman. Uh, and um, I know a lot of Nigerians take him to be a legitimate businessman. So we still have to take that at the moment, pending the investigation by the EFCC. Now, the arrest of Obi Kobana has given rise to a lot of legal questions. I've had one or two people calling me to ask me one or two questions, and I want to address those questions here on you and the law. Now, the first question is, does the EFCC have the right to arrest anybody or everybody, including businessmen, private businessmen, and this is the answer. The answer to this is that, yes, the EFCC has the mandate to investigate anybody and everybody, whether the person is working in a government establishment or the person is running his own private business. So the, the Establishment Act of the EFCC, which was um, enacted into law in 2002, gives the EFCC the power to investigate anybody, to interrogate anybody, to profile anybody, be it someone in the public service, someone in the private service, someone that is doing his own private business, or so on. So that answers the question that by the act creating the EFCC, EFCC has the power to investigate, to call for interrogation, anybody that is suspected to have committed an offense or anybody um, uh, for which investigation has uh, led to the mention of his name. So that's the first question. The second question is, now that Obi Kobana has been arrested, is he entitled to a lawyer of his choice? The answer is yes. Obi Kobana is entitled to a lawyer of his choice. Every person arrested by the EFCC, every person invited by the EFCC has a right to go with a lawyer of his choice. And the EFCC has no option than to allow the person to stay in the interrogation room with his lawyer. This is a constitutional right because by the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria everybody has the right to 
have the services of a lawyer, every person that is uh, accused of the commission of an offense has the right to have the services of a lawyer by his side, you know, when he is visiting the um, security agency for interrogation. In addition to this constitutional provision, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, laws of the Federation of Nigeria, which was signed into law during the administration of President Goodluck Jonathan, also makes a provision to the effect that anybody that is invited by the police, by the, invited by the EFCC, invited by the army, invited by every security agency, has the right to go there with his lawyer. As a matter of fact, you are expected not to talk unless you have a lawyer by your side at the interrogation room and there is also a camera to capture the session at the interrogation room to show that whatever you do there is something done out of your own volition, something done free and something done without compulsion. So Obi Kobana, as a Nigerian citizen, as someone covered by the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, has the unfettered right to go into the EFCC with a lawyer of his choice and have the lawyer stay by his side throughout the interrogation and by the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, there is need for the EFCC to provide a camera to capture the moment and ensure that the proper things are done. Now, the other question, which is the third question now, is, is Ubi Kobana entitled to bail? And the answer is yes. Now, bail means the grant of temporary freedom to an accused person pending the completion of investigation or pending the determination of his case in the court of law. Okay? Now, bail is an offshoot of some constitutional rights, like the rights to freedom of movement, which is in the Constitution, the rights to personal liberty, which is in the Constitution, and the rights to fair hearing, the rights to presumption of innocence. At the point of arrest, now that Obi Kubana has been arrested and taken in by the EFCC, Obi Kubana is still presumed by the law to be innocent of all the charges. I understand that um, the charges against uh, the reason why Obi Kubana has been arrested is uh, in connection with money laundering and tax evasion or tax fraud. Now, at this point, Obi Kubana is still presumed innocent under the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and therefore his rights cannot be curtailed without doing violence to the law. So Obi Kubana is entitled to bail. As a matter of fact, there is no offense under the EFCC Act that carries capital sentence. Capital sentence is death by hanging or uh, death by firing squad. So all the offenses under, under the EFCC Act, there is none that carries capital offense, capital sentence. So when someone is arrested on allegation, on matters bothering on non-capital offenses, that person is ordinarily expected to be granted bail by the arresting agency. So B. Kubana is entitled to bail by the EFCC, and I know that the EFCC will grant him bail in spite of the allegation against him. I know very well uh, that the EFCC is going to grant him bail. I have been to EFCC a couple of times with clients, and I know that after the interrogation, after the, yes, the interrogation with the client, the next thing that the EFCC does as a tradition is that they bring out a form granting the person bail and then the person fulfills the conditions of bail content in the form and the person is allowed, you know, to go home. So Obi Kobana, just like any other Nigerian citizen, is entitled to be granted bail by the EFCC for him to go home and maybe be returning to the EFCC from his house, you know, if there is anything substantial. Um, against him. Now, the other question is, Obi Kubana is said to have been taken in um, less than 48 hours ago. I mean, less than, yeah, less than 48 hours ago. And the question is, for how long can he be kept in the EFCC uh, detention? The answer is that he can only be kept for 24 hours, but not more than 48 hours. I explained that. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria requires that when someone is arrested upon reasonable suspicion of commission of crime, that person can only be kept by the interrogating agency for 24 hours. Now, the person is expected to be taken to court within 24 hours. 
But if there are no courts of competent jurisdiction within the radius of 40 kilometers, I'm, in, I'm using the language of the constitution now, then the person is expected to be granted bail. No security agency is expected to keep someone beyond 24 hours or at most 48 hours if you have justifiable reason to show to the court that, see, there was no court of competent jurisdiction around here and that is why we kept him beyond 48 hours, okay, beyond 24 hours. So the point I'm making is that under the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, in particular the Constitution, every person arrested and taken in for interrogation should be granted administrative bail by the EFCC within 24 hours, but not above, not beyond 48 hours. Now, what happens if the EFCC should keep Ubi Kubana beyond 24 hours or keep him beyond uh, 48 hours? Now, the answer is that the EFCC will be liable under the law to pay damages to Ubi Kubana if they keep him beyond 24 hours or beyond 48 hours. Now, why do I say so? The law in chapter four of the constitution says that every person is entitled to the rights to personal liberty and the rights to freedom of movement. And that these liberties can only be curtailed for 24 hours and 48 hours. So once you exceed 48, once you exceed 24 hours and exceed 48 hours, then you are liable under the law. And once you are found liable by the law, you'll be expected to pay damages to uh, the person that was detained. And in this case, Ubi Kubana. But I, I know very well that the EFCC would be professional enough to grant him bail, uh, to be taken home by reasonable shorties, and then taken back at any time that the EFCC needs him. But detaining him beyond the time permitted by the law is a no-no under the, 19, the 1999 uh, Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, it is said by the newspapers, the EFCC is yet to make a public statement on this. While we wait for them to make a public statement, we have gleaned from the newspapers that Ubi Kubana is taken in for tax evasion or tax fraud and also for money laundering. And let me explain these two things. Tax fraud would be failure to pay tax, okay? It's a crime under the laws of the Federation of Nigeria. Failure to pay tax. It is expected that every citizen of this country should pay tax as at when due and pay sufficient tax without evading, without um, defrauding the federal government of Nigeria. So something as simple as that can give someone um, a reason to be invited by the EFCC for him to come and explain and so on. And um, it is something that can also land someone in jail. I know a lot of people never knew this. So we understand that this is one of the reasons that Obi Kubana has been invited. Now, most businessmen, most people that have been into business uh, may not avoid this. You may not entirely avoid this. As, as I have explained, you can see that tax evasion is a crime under the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And anybody who is guilty of tax evasion can rightly be invited by the EFCC, interrogated, and possibly prosecuted in a court of law for that very crime. It is within the mandate of the EFCC to do so. But if that is the case in the Obi Kubana's case, my advice would be that um, the EFCC should show Obi Kubana the extent of his tax default, if any. And then when that is done and Obi Kubana is satisfied that there is a clear case of tax default here, I would advise him to get his tax consultant to see how that can be negotiated and then money paid to the federal government of Nigeria so that he can go back to his business. I wish the EFCC the best in the investigation about this matter. I also wish Obi Kubana the very best in this matter. I, I do hope that he comes out clean at the end of the day. Thank you very much for watching my channel. I encourage you to keep watching. I encourage you also to subscribe to this channel and share it with friends so that from time to time I can send you not regular notifications on every new video that has been loaded. Every new video, every video has a lesson for you to learn under the basic principles of law as applicable in Nigeria, as applicable in Africa, and applicable in all parts of the world. Thank you. I remain your host, the community. I'm a barrister and solicitor, and it's always a pleasure to know that you are there keeping me company on this channel.